Hi, and welcome back. This week we're going to be looking at Level E Lessons 9 through 12. And you will need your worksheets, 1, 2, and 3, your math card games book, and the activities for learning abacus. Our objectives for Lesson 9 are to find remainders after dividing by 9 and to discover that remainders can be combined. The warm up follows up on the in conclusion from the last lesson. So it will ask the question, what remainder do you get when dividing an even number by two? And what remainder do you get when dividing an odd number by two? So this relationship between the evens and odds is very useful, but it's not commonly explored or thought of even in a curriculum. So it's a pretty neat way of looking at it. We are going to start right off today after the warm up with a worksheet. Remember that your job is to ask questions, not give answers. That's your student's job. And also remember that a problem is not a problem if the answer is obvious. So if your student is having a healthy, productive kind of struggle with this or any other problem, then that's good. Giving, give time to think because that's really important. Now, if your student is really struggling in a very unproductive way, a very frustrated, angry, tears sort of struggling, um, then I would suggest slowing down, maybe doing a couple of problems together, modeling how to do the problems um, so that the student is not so frustrated. But having to think, um, or as my son says, my brain hurts, that's probably a good thing, okay? or maybe they need a little bit of water. But either way, it's good for their brain to hurt a little bit. It's a muscle that they are exercising. So if your student is having trouble with these problems, make sure that the abacus is available. And you could work on the first problem together and then let your child do the rest of them. Did you notice the game log at the beginning of the worksheets book? This is a great way of keeping track of all the work that is being accomplished while playing those games. Remember, 10 to 15 minutes of a math card game is equal to a worksheet and a whole lot more fun. Today's game is Remainders D8. And you can find that in our math card games book, but you can also find it on our blog. Debbie has done a great job explaining how to play this game. So check out her blog on our website and have a blast playing. Although this game can be played with any divisor from 2 to 10, we do think that 9 is an appropriate one after this lesson especially. I sometimes ask the in-conclusion questions before playing the game so that I can just close my book and be done. However, in this lesson, I would wait to ask the questions until after the game is over. Since they're so related, it really is helpful that the kids have had practice playing the game before they answer the question. All right, lesson 10's objectives have to do with finding check numbers. Now, if a check number is a new concept to you, they may make your brain spin a little bit. Um, the idea of check numbers is to have an easy way to check your answers for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The explanation at the bottom right of the first page is really a neat explanation, and it's pretty cool to follow the logic behind it. For this lesson, I would encourage you to read over it a few times and to do the exercises yourself on your own before trying to teach your student. If you like to see the big picture of things and where this is going, then I would suggest watching our video on check numbers. I will leave a link in the description below. As you learned in the last lesson, any group of numbers can be added up and divided by nine, giving you a quotient and a remainder. Or those individual numbers can be divided by nine and their quotient and remainders can be added up. Either way, you end up with the same answer. So let's take a look at that again, just to remind you of what that looked like. So for example, we will have the problem 23 plus 19 plus 38 equals 80 
And then if you divide 80 by 9, you get 8 remainder 8. Okay? However, you could also divide each number first and then add. So here I have 23 divided by 9. I will do 19 divided by 9 and 38 divided by 9. So here is 23 divided by 9 equals 2, remainder 5. 19 divided by 9 equals 2, remainder 1. 38 divided by 9 equals 4, remainder 2. Now notice, if I add all the quotients together, what do I get? I get 8. And all of the remainders, I also get 8. So see how this answer, 8 remainder 8, is the same as this one up here. So the rest of the lesson shows you how to find the remainders without having to divide. The result is check numbers. These can be used to check all of your answers, especially, especially with calculators so readily available today. You may not end up using check numbers on a regular basis in your daily life, but it sure is great to have another tool to use. And it's also a good way to stretch your child's brain. So I would really encourage mastering those check numbers. Some kids like them, some kids hate them. Um, they at least need to know that they're there and how they work, okay? Whether they end up using them in the long run or not, it, it's okay. So after today's lesson, I want you to play the check numbers game A63. It is fun and it does challenge your brain to stretch and to grow. Just think of all of those connections being made in your brain. We don't have a blog or a um, video about it, but we do have it, the description and the instructions in our Math Card Games book, A63. So in lesson 11 this week, we will be using check numbers to check our addition. Remember that check numbers are single digits between zero and eight. The check number for nine and any multiple of nine is zero. So if you have the number 13, the check number is four because one plus three equals four. While the check number for 465 is six. Why? Because four plus five equals nine, so the check number is zero, and zero plus six equals six. This lesson will take your student from checking single digit to multi-digit additions. So let's do a couple of these problems together. Go ahead and erase my whiteboard. Let's do this, 18 plus 30 equals 48, okay? The check number for 18, I'm gonna write the check numbers up here. Later on when we um, do these addition problems vertically, they'll be in a different location. But for right now, horizontally, this is where it goes. So one plus eight is nine, so our check number is zero. 3 plus 0 is 3, and 4 plus 8 is 12, but remember it has to be a single digit, so 1 and 2 is 3. So you can check to see if 48 is the correct answer by adding up the check numbers. Okay, so 0 plus 3 equals 3. Is that right? Yes, it sure is. So check. We got the answer correct. Okay, how about this one? Go ahead and erase that. Let's do 56 plus 24 equals 70. So my check numbers, five and six is 11, one and one is two, two and four is six, and seven and zero is seven. So let's see how this works. Two plus six is eight. Oh, 
but we got the wrong answer. The check number should be seven. So somewhere in here, we made a mistake, okay? Yes, we forgot to carry the one. So look at this. What I did was I said six plus four is 10. That's correct. I should have carried the one. Five and one is six and two is eight. So my answer should be 80. And therefore my check number would be eight. Two plus six does equal eight. So now it checks. So we found the mistake. How about another one? Here we have 127 plus 73 equals 200. So let's find the check number for this. Two and seven is nine. So I know my check number is zero there. So all I'm left with is this one. Seven and three is 10. The check number for 10, one plus zero is one. Plus an equal sign here. And then the check number for 200 would simply be two. Did we do it correctly? Yes, we did. One plus one equals two. So check, we got it right. Go ahead and give your child um, the worksheet to complete today. So after you've done the preliminary exercises together and then play the check numbers game that you played yesterday. All right, lesson 12 is working on four digit addition on side two of the abacus. You have already traded on side two, so it's a pretty simple transition to addition. The warmups today are on worksheet three and um, we will also review the check numbers. Let's look at adding on side two of the abacus. We have our abacus again. And you will demonstrate to your student um, how to do this. So listen to how I'm asking you questions as we go along. So our problem, I'll write it up here actually, is 4,382 plus 2,000 567. Okay. And let's see, let me adjust my camera a little bit. Okay, there you can see that. So I'm going to enter the first number, 4,000. Then I'm going to enter 300, 810. Okay, now starting over here on the right, I'm going to add my seven ones. See how there's a seven there? I'm going to add seven. Do I have seven? Yes, I do. I'm going to add seven. How much do I have in the ones column? I have nine. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the nine. Did I need to trade 10 ones for 110? No, I didn't because I don't have 10 yet. Okay, so I can move on to the tens column. I'm going to add six tens. Check and make sure I got six. Sure enough, I do. Aha, I'm going to have to trade because I know I have 10 or more beads since I have all of these yellow. So I'm going to leave behind four yellow beads for the four blue beads that I'm taking. So here's 10 tens, and I'm going to trade that for 100. And I can write down my answer. My answer in the tens column is four, or four ten. And did I have to trade? Yes, I did. So I need to carry that one up there. Okay, now I'm going to enter five hundreds. So here I have my hundreds, there's 500. Do I need to trade? No, I don't. I can just write down my answer, which is nine. And then I just add in the two thousands. And my answer is six. Okay. 
So see how I asked you all the way along whether we needed to trade, how many do we have, those kinds of questions. That's what you want to ask your student when you're going over um, four-digit addition on the second side of the abacus. Notice that you really want your kids to, to write down the answer to the problem as you're solving it. Okay. All right, so our answer was 6,949. Let's use check numbers to see if our answer is correct. Okay, so I can write little parentheses here for our check numbers, okay? So we have four and three is seven plus two is nine. So I know that check number is zero. So my check number, all I have to do is write down an eight. Okay. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to eliminate the nines. So I just crossed off all the uh, numbers that add up to nine and I'm left with an eight. Here, I can cross off the two and the seven, that makes nine. Five and six makes 11, one and one is two. And then let's see, we have, we already have a couple of nines, so we can get rid of those. Six and four is 10. And the check number would be one. And have we done it correctly? Yes, we have. Eight plus two is 10. And we know that the check number for 10 is one. So this answer is correct, um, 6,949. So after this, example that you work out with your student, you will want him to complete the worksheet, uh, number three, and then ask the in-conclusion questions. You could also play the addition bingo game, um, which is game A50, or a game of your choice, whichever one is your student's favorite. That would be a great choice. All right, that's it for this week, and I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.